Hey, the last time we read The Dog Followed Marty Home, and Mom said, Whose dog is that? Ma asked when I come in. I shrug. Just followed me, is all. Where did it pick up with you? Dad asks. Up in Shiloh across the bridge, I say. Up on the road by the river? I bet that's Judd Travers Beagle, that says Dad. He got himself another hunting dog a few weeks back. Judd got him a hunting dog. How come he don't treat it right, I ask. <clears throat> How do you know he don't? Way the dog asked. Scared to pee, almost, I say. Ma gives me a look. Don't seem to me he's got any marks on him. There we go. <clears throat> Dad says, studying him from our window. Don't have to mark a dog to hurt him, I'm thinking. Just don't pay any attention and he'll give up and go away, Dad says. And get out of these wet clothes, Ma tells me. You want to follow your Grandma Slater to the grave? I change clothes. And then sit down and turn on the TV, which has only two channels. On Sunday afternoon, it's preaching and baseball. I watch baseball for an hour. Then I get up and I sneak to the window. Ma knows what I'm about. I'm what I'm about. That Shiloh dog still out there, she asks. I nod. He's looking at me. He sees me there at the window and his tail starts to thump. I name him Shiloh. Wow. Finally, the dog has a name. In A Wolf Called Wander, it took the whole book to get the name Wander. <clears throat> Sunday night supper is whatever left from noon. It's nothing left over. If nothing's left over, Ma takes cold cornmeal mush, fries it up in big slabs, and we eat it with caro syrup. But this night, there's still rabbit. I don't want any, but I know Shiloh does. I wonder how long I can keep pushing that piece of rabbit around my plate. Not very long, I discover. You're going to eat that meat or just want just playing with it, Dad asks. If you don't want it, I'll take it to my lunch tomorrow. I'll eat it, I say. Don't you be giving it to that dog, Ma says. I take a tiny bite. What's the doggy going to eat then, asks Becky. She's three which is four years younger than Daryl Lynn. Nothing here, that's what, says Mom. Becky and Daryl Lynn look at Dad. Now I had them feeling sorry for the Beagle, too. Sometimes girl children get what they want easier than I do. But not this time. Dog's going right back across the river when we get through eating, says Dad. If that's Judd's new dog, he'll probably, he probably don't have sense enough yet to find his way home again. We'll put him in the Jeep and drive him over. Don't know what else I figured Dad to say. Do I really think he's going to tell me to wait until morning and if Judd Spiegel's still there, we can keep him? I try all kinds of ways to figure out how I could get that rabbit meat off my plate and into my pocket. But Ma's watching every move I make. So I excuse myself and go outside and go over to the chicken coop. It's off toward the back where Ma can't see. We keep three hens and I take one of the two eggs that was in the nest and carry it out behind the bushes. I whistle softly. Shiloh comes loping toward me. I crack the egg and empty it into my hands. Hold my hands down low and Shiloh eats the egg, licking my hands clean afterwards and then curling his tongue down between my fingers to get every little bit. Good boy, Shiloh, I whisper and stroke him all over. I hear the back door slam and Dad comes out on the stoop. Marty! Yeah, I go around, Shiloh at my heels. Let's take that dog home now. Dad goes over and opens the door of the Jeep. Shiloh puts his tail between his legs and just stands there. So I go around to the other side, get in and whistle. Shiloh leaps up onto my lap, but he don't look too happy about it. 
For the first time, I have my arms around him. He feels warm, and when I stroke him, I can feel places on his body where he has ticks. Dog has ticks, I tell my dad. Dodd will take him off, Dad says. Well, what if he don't? It's his concern, Marty, not yours. It's not your dog. You keep to your own business. I press myself against the back of the seat as we start down our bumpy dirt road driveway to the road. I want to be a vet someday, I tell my dad. Hmm, he says. I want to be a traveling vet, the kind that has his office in a van and goes to, around to people's homes and don't make folks come to him. Read about it in a magazine at school. You know what you have to do to be a vet, Dad asks. Got to go to school, I know that. You got to go have college training like a doctor almost. Takes a lot of money to go to veterinary school. My dream sort of leaks out like water in a paper bag. Wow, what a simile. I could be a veterinarian helper, I suggest, my second choice. Yeah, you maybe could, says Dad, and points the Jeep up the road into the hills. <clears throat> Dusk is settling in now. Still warm, though. A warm July night. Trees look dark against the red sky. Lights coming on in a house here, another one there. I'm thinking, how in any one of these houses there's probably somebody who'd take better care of Shiloh than Judd Travers would? How come this dog has to be his? The reason I don't like Judd, Judd Travers is a whole lot of reasons. Not the least is that I was in the corner store once down in Friendly and I saw Judd cheat Mr. Wallace at the cash register. Judd gives the man a 10 and gets him to talking and then <clears throat> when Mr. Wallace gives him change says he gave him a 20. I blink like I can't believe Judd done that and old Mr. Wallace is all confused so I say no I think you gave him a 10. And Judd glares at me, whips out his wallet, and waves a $20 bill in front of his eye. Whose picture is on that bill, boy, he says. I don't know. He gives a look, says, I thought so. That's Andrew Jackson, he says. I had two of them in my wallet when I walked in here, and now I've only got one. And this man's got the other, and I want my change. Mr. Wallace, he's so flustered, he just digs in his money drawer and gives Judd the change for a 20. And afterward, I thought, what did Andrew Jackson have to do with it? <clears throat> Judd's so fast talking, he can get away with anything. Don't know anybody who likes him much, but around here, folks keep to their own business, like Dad says. <clears throat> in Tyler County, that's important. Way it always been, anyhow. Another reason I don't like Judd Travers is he spits tobacco out of the corner of his mouth. And if you don't, if he don't like you, and he sure don't like me, he sees how close he can spit to where you're standing. Third reason I don't like him is because he was at the fairgrounds last year. Same day we were, and seemed like every place I was, he was there in front of me, blocking my view. Standing in front of me at the mud bog sitting in front of me at the tractor pull and rising right up out of his seat at the Jordan Globe of Death Motorcycle Act. So I missed the best part. Fourth reason I don't like him is because he kills deer out of season. He says he don't, but I seen him once just about dusk when a young buck strapped over the, with a young buck strapped over the hood of his trunk. He tells me the buck can run in front of him on the road and he accidentally ran over it but I saw the bullet hole myself if he got caught he'd have to pay $200 more than he's got in the bank I'll bet we're in Shiloh now dad's crossing the bridge by the old abandoned grist mill turning at the boarded up school and for the first time I can feel Shiloh shaking badly He's trembling all over, I swallow. Try to say something to my dad and have to swallow again. How do you go about reporting someone who doesn't care, take care of his dog right? I finally ask. Who are you fixing to report, Marty? Judd. If this dog's mistreated, 
if this dog's mistreated, he's about one out of 50,000 animals, that is, Dad says. Folks even bring them up here in the hills and let them out and figure they can live on rats and rabbits. Wouldn't be the first dog that wasn't treated right. But this one come to me to help him, I, I insist. Knew that's why he was following me. I got hooked on him, Dad, and I want to know he's treated right. For the first time, I can tell Dad's getting impatient with me. Now you get that out of your head right now. If it's Travers' dog, it's no mind of ours how he treats it. What if it was a child, I ask him, getting too smart for my own good? If some, some kid was shaking like this dog is shaking, you wouldn't feel no pull for keeping an eye on him? Marty, Dad says. And now his voice is just plumb tired. This here's a dog, not a child. And it's not our dog. And I want you to quit going on about him, here? I shut up then. Let my hands run over Shiloh's body like maybe everywhere I touch I can protect him somehow. We're getting closer to the trailer where Judd lives and his other dogs and already they're barking up a storm hearing Dad's Jeep come up the road. Dad pulls over. You want to let him out, he says. I shake my head hard. I'm not letting him out of here till I know for sure it belongs to Judd. I'm asking for a slap on my face, but Dad don't say anything. He just gets out and goes up the boards Judd has laid out in place of a sidewalk. Judd's at the door of his trailer already, in his undershirt, peering out. Looks like Ray Preston, he says, looking through the screen. Whoa, that's the end of this reading. So take out your Google Doc and do a summary along with your questions, predictions, feelings, and thoughts. I'm wondering what will happen with Shiloh at Judd's house. That's what I'm wondering. How about you? See you next time.